It was supper time in late September 1991, and Paducah, Kentucky residents Linda and Jerry Lieb were in their yard near the Barkley Regional Airport. They watched as a man in a brown leather jacket and jeans scaled an airport fence and raced toward a small commuter plane on the tarmac. Suspicious of the stranger, they continued to watch as he disappeared around the side of the small aircraft. At precisely 6.49 p.m., Flight 2940 was headed to Memphis at a speed of 125 miles per hour. As the aircraft became airborne, it increased its speed to 190. Suddenly, the Liebs saw an unknown object fall from the plane. A short time later, Ron Jones, director of airfield services, noted some damage to a fence on airport grounds. Upon investigation, he discovered the lifeless body of a man. Jones was responding to a report of a trespasser jumping the fence just before sunset and running across the airstrip. He put the pieces together. The body fit the description of the unknown intruder reported by airport worker Wes Weaver. Weaver had encountered the stranger around 6 p.m. The man was desperate to get out west and was looking to hitch a ride with a pilot. He offered up his leather jacket in exchange for the ride, but Wes, sensing potential trouble, instructed him to leave. Weaver said the man did not appear to be mentally impaired or under the influence of alcohol or drugs. He just seemed like a distressed guy in a bind. He gave the strange encounter no further thought until a half hour later when he spotted the man, now wearing the jacket, walking down the road adjacent to the airport. Suddenly, the man raced toward the fence, scaled it with ease, and ran across the airstrip. Weaver radioed for security. Like the leaves, he did not see the man jump onto the right wing of the plane and no one saw him slide from the wing and plummet to the ground some 3,500 feet below. A short time later, McCracken County Coroner Jerry Byer stood over the body on his table. No identification had been discovered on the young man who, when found, was dressed in two pairs of jeans, a brown shirt, a green sweater, and a knit jogging jacket, all concealed beneath the burnished leather bomber. But they did have several promising clues to work with. Inside the leather coat was a collar tag with the name Lieutenant L.F. Price, USAF, but a call to the Air Force found no such person. Tucked inside a jacket pocket was a pair of swim goggles and a bear claw. While the latter might be deemed unusual, the forensic examiner wasn't at all surprised by the goggles. Byer noted the mystery man, determined to be in his mid to late 20s, had an all over even tan with no tan lines. He also sported a shaved pubic area popular with swimmers. Manscaping was not a thing back in 1991, so this struck investigators as odd. The man boasted a lean, toned physique, which had enabled him to scale a high fence, traverse 800 feet of tricky terrain, which included several ditches, and catch up to a moving aircraft. Byer also considered that the stranger could possibly have been a member of the Chippendale-style male dance review that had thrilled crowds in Paducah the week before. However, the leads led nowhere. Detective Jim Greif theorized that the man's desperation to travel out west likely involved the need to get home. They hoped to find some clue that would lead them to his family and ultimately to his identity. Six weeks after the young man's death, a funeral was held for him at Oak Grove Cemetery in Paducah. A headstone with the name John Doe was erected above his grave. Cut to Paducah, Kentucky, 1992. Locals were glued to their TVs on September 16th when the popular series Unsolved Mysteries ran the strange story. It was roughly one year since the start of the case that would haunt Jerry Byer for decades. Viewers were riveted by the mysterious case and hoped for a speedy resolution. After all, the show had a huge audience and frequently posted updates on their segments. But not this time. Despite widespread attention and numerous leads, no new information about the mysterious death of Paducah's John Doe was uncovered. It would be another seven years before a woman in Ohio, with an assist from Coroner Byer, would finally identify the mystery man in Oak Creek Cemetery. According to Byer, not a week went by without him thinking about his John Doe. It may have officially been stamped a cold case, but he never gave up trying to identify the young man with no name. He was also motivated to give closure to the man's family. He visited the cemetery on each anniversary, laying a wreath beneath the grave marker. Byer also created flyers with pertinent information, which he would distribute to police officers who might be able to help. 
fingerprints and dental records were entered into modern databases, but none ever produced a hit. Still, Bayer persevered. On one such anniversary, Bayer received media coverage while depositing a wreath on the grave. An article published in 1998 in the Paducah Sun chronicled the story of John Doe and Bayer's quest to ID him. The woman in Ohio stumbled upon the article on the internet, and on June 9, 1999, she identified the mystery man as her stepson, Brian Stanley Deeker. Deeker was a marathon runner from Cincinnati. He was last seen by his sister on September 26, 1991, just four days before his death. She had noted that Brian, who had been diagnosed as paranoid schizophrenic at the age of 21, was behaving strangely. She alerted their father, Jerry, who stopped by Brian's empty apartment. Brian was gone, having left behind his ID, a handwritten will, and a note stating that he was going mountain climbing out west. Such trips were not unusual for the adventurous athletic Deeker, so his family did not worry at first, but when they didn't hear from him after a few days, they reported him missing. When Brian's stepmother, Dee, saw a rerun of the Unsolved Mystery segment in 1997, she contacted Paducah investigators, who did not believe their John Doe was her missing stepson, but she was convinced she was right, especially after viewing autopsy photos. She read the Paducah Sun article and contacted the author, Bill Bartleman. He then forwarded a photo to Coroner Byer, who sided with D. He believed his John Doe was Brian Deeker. On June 8th, a fingerprint match was confirmed by detectives in Cincinnati. Thus, John Doe was formally identified as Brian Stanley Deeker, born March 9, 1963. Deeker's schizophrenia is believed to have been the cause of his erratic behavior leading up to his death and ultimately to his decision to stow away on the wing of a moving airplane. Jerry Byer, the coroner who had tirelessly worked to give Brian his identity back, lay a wreath beneath the new grave marker, which rests beneath the John Doe headstone. His family chose to leave his remains in Paducah, where residents had embraced him as family.